Greetings all, it's the Devious Monkey here. Okay, I think I finally got this all done and figured out. It's taken me a while, and yes, I did what I said I wasn't gonna do, but are you really surprised? All right, so as you can see, I did add these lights. They're all my Aperture MC lights, the last four that I had left. So I'm using all six of my lights. One being up there, which is my fill light, the second one right there, which is sort of my product light that comes down and lights up the table, or the, yeah, the, the basically table desk that I have in front of me, and then the four that were left over. I said I wasn't going to drill into the bookshelves and run cables so that I had power and all that kind of stuff. Naturally, that's what I did next. What I did yesterday, because it's Sunday now, is that I went through and I finished all the last minute stuff that I wanted to do. Now, this incorporated going back into the walls where I had filled in the holes that had the drywall anchors in them. So when I had the studio shifted this way and into the corner, it was necessary for me to put some angle brackets, sort of safety brackets on the back of the bookshelves to get them to stay where I needed them to stay. And that required me drilling into the wall and setting up drywall anchors so that I had something to screw into other than just drywall because it would have just ripped right out. And when I did that and I pulled those anchors out, it left like a big quarter inch hole in the walls and I needed to fix that. So last weekend, after I finished getting this all set up, I went in with spackling paste and I filled the holes in, but I said I was gonna give them a day to dry, cure, so to speak, and then I was going to sand them down and, and paint that those two little spots on the wall. Yeah, well, it took a week and then I finally did it. So that's what I did yesterday. I fixed those holes, painted the walls, and good to go. And I said to myself, you know what? I kind of feel like I really want to run power to those Aperture MC lights because I'm not going to pay attention to them and they're going to die on me again. So then I thought, all right, well, I've got white bookshelves. I can't use the cables that I have because I have red, black, blue, you know, all these different colors and I didn't want them to show up. So I thought, all right, plus I need to get a hub so I can plug all those into the hub and then power the hub. You'd think that would be easy, but it wasn't. I couldn't find a freaking hub anywhere the USB-C hub that would work. And then I was trying to find cables, white cables that were long enough and that weren't just junk. And that was tough to find as well. The closest thing I came were silver ones from Walmart. And I think they were Belkin, but they were $15 each. So I was like, okay, so I'm gonna spend $60 just so that I can plug these in and so that they're white so that you can't see them. And you can't even see them anyways. So I'm glad that I decided not to do that. What I did instead was I ended up buying a $5 roll of white duct tape. All through this, I went through and found where I wanted my holes. I used a quarter inch drill bit, drilled through in the center, and then quickly found that I couldn't do that either. The problem with that is that the ends of the USB-C cables I had two of them that were at a 90 degree angle and then two of them that went straight in. But either way, it was too difficult to try to find those behind the bookshelf because remember, these are now screwed into the wall. So I'm up there dangling uh, you know, a cable down while I'm kneeling down here trying to get these bottom ones. And it was, it was really tough. I couldn't do it. And I found I, it was impossible for me to actually even get that through the hole easily or at all for that matter. So I ended up having to take my knife and cut bigger sections out in the back there so that I could get a pair of needle nose pliers through the opening to grab onto the cable and then yank it through. Before that was all said and done, I ran into another problem and the monkey learned a lesson. I could not get the app to turn those damn lights on all at the same time or some of them at all regardless of what I did. And I was thinking to myself, what the frick is going on? And what I ended up finding out yesterday was that it was all the power brick, the part that plugs into power. Those were my problem. So I went through yesterday and I found four of those little Apple bricks. And I guess they're five watt bricks. And then you plug the USB cable into that. And then you plug that into your power strip, surge suppressor, whatever you want to use. And I had plugged all those in down here, testing them, plugged them in, put them into the light, saw that the light was charging, good to go. No, 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 not good to go. 
because that little five watt power brick not giving the cable or the light enough power to charge and run at the same time. So then I went and got other Apple bricks and those ones were 10 watts. Those were the bigger ones that came with my iPads. And I plugged one of those in, put it into the, into the, the power strip, the light, turn on the app and the app recognized it and was able to control it. And I thought, okay, that's my problem. So I went through, because you know me, I'm Mr. Excessive, I buy so much shit. I've got these bricks and things laying everywhere. So I found four of those, plug them all in, put them into the power strip, turn on the Citus app, and everything worked perfectly. They're all plugged in, they're 100% charged, they're fully powered, and then if I lose power, all of these lights will have 100% power and they'll still be able to work anyways. Now that I have all these lights pretty much hard mounted into my studio, it means I'm not taking them on the road with me. Now, truth be told, every time I go on the road, I forgot to take one with me anyways, and then I'd sit in a hotel and then I'd complain that it looked like shit. So I remedied that with this. So now I bought this little Yulanzi light. It's an RGB. It works just fine. Now, right now, I have it set to 250, so it's kind of purplish, like a light purple, and I have it at 25% intensity. And you can see that it makes a big difference. Okay, so you can see that. It does indeed work, and now this will be what I carry with me when I go on the road. It's very small. I mean, you can see, I mean, it's not even as big as my hand. It's like the size of my middle finger, a little bit bigger than that, and it works just fine. It's like a 2000 milliamp battery, doesn't matter, because then I also grabbed one of my power grips that's just been sitting in one of the magical drawers, and it has the ZDO aluminum tripod feet on there, and now all I have to do, and there's a quarter 20 on both sides, and I guess that's because they have some kind of setup that you can... Um, connect them together and make big ones. And they have this size, they got a little bit bigger size, they got really big ones too. This is what I wanted for portability though. So now I can just set this down anywhere I go and I can have 2000 milliamps of power already built into it, plus an external battery. It will last me longer than I would ever need to have this light on and I'm good to go. I have all the light that I could possibly need in my studio. I have a portable that I can take with me anywhere I go on the road or in the woods or whatever. This literally will fit in any of my pockets if I need to, or it'll sit in my backpack unless I need it, and I'm good to go. The studio is now finally complete. So that's pretty much it. I got all that done basically last weekend and this weekend, and it's all done. So that's all I wanted to show you today. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, leave it down below in the comment section. As always, thank you for joining me. Be sure to like and subscribe. And remember kids, forward and up.